Hey class, so now we're going to use truth tables to test the validity of arguments. Okay? And this is really simple. All you have to do is uh, draw the truth table for the uh, um, everything in the argument, the premises and the conclusion, and just look at each row and see if there's a situation where the premises are true and the conclusion is false. And if there is, then the argument's invalid. If there isn't, if there is no um, scenario where the premise is true or premises is true, and the conclusion is false, then the argument is valid. And uh, so let's take a look at this. I went ahead and diagrammed this one. I'll go through the steps of the next one. But I filled in, um, remember we have two letters, so we have four rows. And I went true, false, true, false over here. And then double trues and double falses for the next letter. And then I filled in the by conditional, right? Not in would be the opposite of in. So we have false, true, false, true. And then we have keys. I'm not going to write them all, but you could in this column. And then the by conditional is when they have the same truth value. So we have P is true, not in is false, so this is false. And then we have true and true, so the by conditional is true. And we have false and false, so it's true because they have the same truth value. And then we have true and false, so it's false. So we figured out the possible values of the premise based on these possible values in these rows of P and N. Now we do the conclusion, we have N or P. You could take the letters and you know, take true or false and write them over here again, but I'm just going to look over here. Inner P is uh, false when they're both false. So we have true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. So it's only false in the last row. The others are true. So now I fill, I have filled in the truth table very mechanically. Okay. And um, now you just look and see, is there a row in which the premise is true and the conclusion false? If there is, it's invalid. So we have false, true. Fine, true, 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 false, false. So there is no situation, no row, and with no possible combination of truth values in which this argument has a true premise and a false conclusion. Therefore, this argument is not invalid, it's valid. So when you're doing arguments, you're just plugging in the premises and conclusion, doing a truth table, and looking for a row in which there's all true premises and a uh, false conclusion. Find one if it's valid, if not, it's valid. Um, notice up here, too, as for the convention of distinguishing between premises and conclusion, in your book, they'll use one little slash to separate the premises and two little slashes to separate the last premise from the conclusion. And I also like to sometimes just write the word or put P or C for the premise and conclusion and draw um, the columns over my C. Okay. So let's do another one, give you practice on this. This one, not completely filled in. Again, we have, um, I've written out the argument. So the premises are separated with one slash and the conclusion of two. Or you can do the column method, which I prefer. You can just write it out if you want, like this. But you want to be organized before you start. We have two letters, so we're going to have four rows. The first letter on the right, we have alternating trues and falses. And then the next letter on the left, we have double trues and double falses. Now we just plug in and figure this out. Now not x is going to be the opposite of x, so I'm going to put in, uh, oops, and I lost, let me go back to this side. I could have just filled this in, but, all right, so not x would be false, and then true, and then false, and then uh, true. Now if you're lost here, go back to the previous videos for a review of this stuff, but we're taking not x would be the opposite of value of x. And then we have w, which is true, true, false, false, right? You can write it in if you want. Let's see. True, true, false, false. And then we figure out the little and, the dot right here. And it's true when both are true, otherwise it's false. So we know it's true here. Otherwise it is false. True and false is false. False and false is false. And false and true is Running out of room there. And then that's not the main operator though for the premise. The main operator is this tilde or not. So we're going to take the value of the inside and reverse it. So not false is true. Not true is false. And uh, not false is true. Not false is true. It's real easy to make a mistake when you're doing this. It's good to go back and, and check and make sure everything looks right. Um, but everything looks right to me. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the second premise. And again, we have x. If you, uh, let's, let's go ahead and, and do it the long way. I'll go true, true. And then we have false. I'm just 
transferring the value of x over. So I can see it more clearly. And then we have, um, and guess what? I made a mistake, didn't I? Okay. So there you go. You want to check your work. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm going to erase this. Uh, that should be false. And then uh, for x, this should be true. Okay. Let me just do this. Do it in pain. It's a little bit more time consuming than I want here, but what I have. Okay. So let me turn the brush back on. So with the x, we transfer it over, and we have true, false, true, false. And then the not w, you take the nub w, and you reverse it, right? So look over here at the w, and you reverse all those values. Be false, false, true, true. Okay. And then you take the Right, and figure it out. True and false, false and false, true and true, false and true. So, and is true and both conjuncts are true. Otherwise, it's false. So, there you go. Um, now we have the and, but again, we have a little negation. So, whatever this is, it's negated. So, the premise two, we have it's not the case that false is true. It's not the case that false is true. It's not the case that true is false. It's not the case that False, that's true. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> okay. Um, so I diagram the premises and then we have X or W. Very easy again, we just look over here. And if they're uh, if one of them is true, then X or W is true. Okay. So true, true, true. And then uh, this is the only false because X and W are false. Okay, so we've diagrammed it. And it may help you at this point to circle the main operator if you get confusing. So for the premise, this is the value of the premise one, okay, the main operator of the premise. And this is the value of premise two, right here. Okay. These are the ones we want to look at when we're comparing them to the conclusion. So all we're doing is we're looking for all true premises and a false conclusion. And if, if we find it, the argument then valid. So true, true, true. False, true, true. Now it has a false premise, so it doesn't matter what the True, false, true, doesn't matter. True, true, false. Oh no, right here. So we put invalid because of this last row. So what that tells me is that this argument has a possible truth combination when it's invalid. And that's when both W and X are false. So the argument is invalid. Um, and you could put invalid line 4. Right? All right. So that's it. Let's do, uh, some of people are intimidated by these types, so I might as well do one. Um, this one has three letters, so remember, for three letters, you're going to have eight rows. Okay. And I wrote true, false, true, false, true, false, just like normal. Then the next one's double trues, and then the next one's four trues. If we had another uh, column, it would be eight trues and eight falses. Okay, so J. I'm not going to write that, but let's do um, if K, then L. So these are the second two. If true, then true. Is true. A little horseshoe. If true, then false. Is false. If false, then true. Is true. If false, then false. Is true. If true, then true. Is true. And uh, true, then false. Is false. And then we have true. Okay. So we've done the horseshoe. Right. Okay. And then the J, we can just look over here, or you can recopy it. I'm not going to because I'm a pain. Takes a while. Okay, so we have true and true. So this premise is true. Notice it's a premise, it's separated by one dash, and we have another premise and a conclusion. So I like to write, like up here, this is premise one, and this is premise two, and this is the conclusion. Okay, so j, and then we have this value for m, k, and l. So true then false is false. True then true is true. True then true is true. Now notice the rest of the J's are false. When you have a false antecedent and a conditional, it's always true. So I can just put true. 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 And true. And you may want to check your work, but we figured out premise one, unless I made a dumb mistake, right? I wouldn't say dumb, a careless mistake, right? Okay, and then you have if K then. J and L. So 
So again, you could transfer over k if you want. Let's go ahead and do that since it's a far further way to look over to the left. So we're transferring k, which is double t's and double s. If you look over to the left. Double t's and uh, double s. Okay. And then you have if j, then l. So the first letter and the third. And I'm going to try not to transfer. We have if true, then true. It's true. If true, then false. It's false. If true, then true. And if true, then false. So it's true. And false. Now, if j, then l, the rest of the j's are false, so we know the rest of these are true. And then the antecedent and the conditional and the false is always true. Okay. So um, now we can figure out the main operator of terms too. Let's figure out what the value is. So if true, then true is true. If true, then false is false. True. Um, true. True. I made mistakes too, because sometimes my T look like this. And then just messes the whole thing up. And notice how mechanical this process is. Once you know how to determine and then just memorize the truth values or Conditionals and such. Um, it's just mechanical. Sometimes when you teach computers to do it, program it a bit. So then we have J or K. Then let's do the antecedent of the conditional first. Okay, so we have J or K. And as long as one is true, then the whole thing is true. J or K. So we have uh, true. true. And uh, we don't get to two falses. So at the bottom two rows. Okay. And uh, so we have false and false. Okay. Now we have L. And I could transfer over L if I wanted. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna make it uh, just keep it simple, shortcut here. So if true, then L is true, so that's true. Okay, now if true then false, that would be false. If true, then true would be true. Now, if true, then L is false, and that would be false. Okay. We have two more trues, right? So, if true, then L is true, that's true. If true, then L is false, that's false. And then you have if true. I'm sorry, you have falses. So we know that the uh, conditional will be true, and false antecedent. All right, so we determine the value of this. Oh, oh gosh, that's awful looking. Okay, and you just look for a row and see if it's valid or not. So row one, we have two true premises and a true conclusion. That's okay. Row two, we have false premises, so I don't even have to go further because I know that what I'm looking for is true premises and a false conclusion. That's the only way it's invalid. So I don't have true premises, so I can just move on. True, true, and uh, I think this is true. See, I didn't write it clearly. So um, J or K is true, and uh, L is true. So yeah, it's true. So that's okay. Then we have true, true, and false. Uh oh, right here. We have a problem in row four. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's invalid, right? Row four. Uh, so it's invalid there. So we have true, 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 true. Oh, invalid right here. And uh, true, 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 true. So this argument is invalid because there are some possible truth combinations. For example, in row four, when j is true and k and l are false, in which the conclusion doesn't follow from the premises. It's possible for the conclusion to be false even though the premises are true. This argument is invalid. And uh, what we'll do next time is a shortcut method. Because notice, if you have four letters, you're going to have to draw 16 rows, right? And so we're going to do an indirect proof table.